Hi guys, T so today we are going to continue our lesson on scatter plots. Uh, so before we begin that, I'd like you guys to do this problem here as the do now. It does cover uh, what we learned last in the last video on what a scatter plot is and that it just shows trends and we talk a little bit about correlation as well. So if you haven't seen that video, back up, go to that video, watch it, and then come back to here and do this do now. So go ahead and pause the video now and give it a shot. Alright, so what we need to do here is use our calculator to sketch uh, the scatter plot and the data below then uh, describe the correlation. And I will go ahead and uh, do that uh, just up here on your graph and then in the next couple of videos we are going to take a look at how to do this all on our calculators today. So all we need to do is just plot our year in cost as an XY coordinate. So we're going to treat our years as our X's and our cost as our Y's. I've already got it labeled here on the graph for you. You can see here I have the year and here the cost. So let's do this. So 0, uh, 1639, 0, 1639 is going to be somewhere up here. And guys, it doesn't need to be exact. This, as long as it's approximate, we're just trying to see a trend here and see if there is a, a correlation between the year and cost. At 5, we're going to be at 1172. So five years. So five years, we're going to follow that up and go to 1172. 1172 is probably about here somewhere. At 10 years, the cost was 906. So at 10 years, go up to 906, just above 900 right there. 15 years, 1739. 20 years, 50, uh, 563, sorry. 20 years the cost was 563 so go up to 500 and just past halfway there at 25 years it's 410 so just above 400 and then lastly at 30 years it was 280 so that's 200 about 280 about right there so now we can talk about the correlation between these two variables, the year and cost. It seems as seems to be that as the years go the years go up see if I can write this down here for you. As the years go up, the cost is going down. So uh, let's get a little sketch here. I'm just going to, we can kind of see a trend here. The trend is that the cost started off pretty high and started to trend downwards. Okay, and that looks like the trend line. And, and the last time we talked uh, about trend lines, we, we talked about, well, how close is all this data? How strong is this co correlation? And so uh, this actually, if I, I mean, you can kind of see it, with the exception of this point, I could almost put one straight line on all these dots. And, and so that makes a very strong correlation. So we do have a strong correlation. It is a strong correlation. Uh, it's also, uh, we also can describe the, the trend or the correlation as either positive or uh, negative. In this case, uh, if you look back at the house that Slope built, this was uh, the positive slope and this was the negative slope. So this is going down as you read the graph from left to right. So this is a negative and a strong relationship between the two variables, year and cost. So that's just a quick review over uh, scatter plots, how we sketch them by hand. And today we are going to look at that just a little bit further. So what is this trend line? What is the line of best fit? Uh, well, that, that's what it is. I mean, it, it's the, the line that best fits all of our data. That line right there that can fit most of our data. So what does that show us? Well, it's a straight line that best represents the data on a scatter plot. Half of the points should be above it. Half of the points should be uh, below it or approximately. You want to hit as many points as possible as you're drawing the line and then if you can't hit any points then there needs to be the same amount below as there are above. In this case we have maybe one one right here, two, three, four below and one, two, three, four, five above. This one's really close to being on the point though so uh, on the line I mean and so that's, that's actually not too bad of a trend line here. And this is a uh, uh, temperature and ice cream sells over here so this is the money over here you make uh, selling ice cream still uh, see that in your last video uh, so what what does a trend line do well a trend line is going to help us predict our data and this is what's really cool about statistics 
is we have a bunch of data we collected and now we want to use it to predict what's going to happen uh, when, when in this case, when the temperature is, I don't know, 21 degrees or maybe 27 degrees. So you can see right here, this trend line would actually predict how much, I, how much money I would sell on ice cream or how much money I would get in, in selling ice cream when it was 13 degrees outside. So there's no data point here, but the trend line can help me predict that I will make about $200. Right, so this is this is what a trend line helps us do. So let's take the two different ways. Take a look at the two different ways that we can uh, use a trend line to predict uh, our our data or what we might get in our data. The first way is to interpolate. Interpolate is basically two words put together: inter and polate. Uh, polate has to do with collecting data. Inter means inside. So inter, polate, interpolate is looking for a value that falls within the range of the values on the scatter uh, plot. And so what we're looking at here is, when I said range, uh, we know that's the y value, so between here and here, so between these two values. I like to kind of drop parentheses, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. I'm gonna choose a different color here. So between this point and this point, if you're choosing a data point between 12 degrees Celsius and 20, uh, looks like about 25 degrees Celsius, you are interpolating. So this is what interpolating does. It says when it's 21 degrees outside, how much money will I make approximately? Well, I don't have a data point for that yet, but if you go up to the trend line at 21 degrees, you can see about how much you're going to make on your ice cream cells given the temperature outside. In this case, we'd make about $480. Well, that's looking inside of data. What does it mean to look outside the data? Well, there's another word for that. This is the other way of looking and, and helping us predict. And it's called extrapolate. You've probably heard this word before, and this is where it, it comes from. It means extra. Extra actually means outside. So if you're extrapolating, you are looking for values that fall beyond the scatter plot. The further away from the plot you go, the less reliable your prediction is. So let's take a look what that means. Well, you can see here, this is where my data is at, between 12 degrees and about 25 degrees. If I were to ask uh, myself, well, how much money would I be making if it were 29 degrees outside? And again, we're talking Celsius here. How much, how much money would I make in my ice cream cells? Well, follow that up to the trend line. Well, it falls outside or beyond the scatter plot. That's okay though. My trend line is there to tell me what I'm going to be making. Follow this over here to the y-axis. It says that I'm going to be making about $750. Now there is a catch to this. Uh, eventually, we're not going to be uh, getting these predictions right. Uh, 29 degrees uh, is, is, is fairly warm uh, in Celsius and y'all might not know too much about Celsius, but Celsius is a little bit different than Fahrenheit like we are used to using here. 29 degrees Celsius is 84.2 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's, that's actually pretty warm. It's not super hot, but it's pretty warm. But back to the point I'm trying to make here is how warm can it get? And, and, you know, let's say I want to make $5,000 in one day. Can I predict what temperature that would be outside? Well, let's, I mean, if you jumped up to 100 degrees Celsius, right, is, does that make sense? Well, 100 degrees Celsius, 100 degrees Celsius is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't think we're going outside for ice cream at this point and getting, I'm, I'm not even going outside to sell ice cream at this point. I'm gonna keep it to myself if I even have it and that's if we're alive. Okay, so eventually, eventually this, the further we go on this x-axis, the less reliable our predictions are gonna be. It doesn't make sense for it to be 212 degrees outside and selling ice cream or still be alive. That doesn't make sense. So the further we go, here in this case, uh, on the x-axis, and, and the temperature is rising, obviously I'm probably not going to be making any money that day. The same thing goes for going down, or down the x-axis. 
Like you, you can say about negative 40 degrees Celsius, which is about negative 40 Fahrenheit. It's about the same around that temperature. Uh, ain't nobody going to be buying ice cream, but at that point, your trend line is actually going to be negative, right? Uh, people aren't paying you, or, and you're not going to pay them to buy your ice cream. Uh, now, you, you might argue that you might be losing money, but it doesn't make sense to have negative money or even go out and buy the supplies to sell, so sell ice cream. So there are points where we probably shouldn't be predicting, but if we're kind of close to our scatter plot, then I would say that it's fairly reliable. And we can look at that reliability by looking at the strength of the correlation. So that is today's lesson, guys. Uh, that's the beginning of it, is sketching a trend line and then interpolating and extrapolating data from the graph. Okay, so here's another example of uh, interpolating. Interpolating here would be, me, would be me asking, if the temperature is 21 degrees outside, about how much money would I make in selling ice cream? So 21 degrees, about right here. Follow that up to the trend line and then follow that right on back to here. That's probably just above halfway, so about $475. So if it were 21 degrees outside, 21 degrees Celsius outside, I would probably be selling 470-ish, $75 of ice cream. That's interpolating. Uh, this example that you saw here at 29 degrees is extrapolating because it falls outside the point or the scatter plot. So what did we learn today in this lesson? Well, we learned about uh, a trend line, sketching a trend line. Uh, so we got sketching a trend line. And then we also learned two other terms, interpolating and extrapolating. Uh, interpolating is looking within the data that's inside the scatter plot and extrapolating is looking outside the data. Interpolating inside, extrapolating outside. So if you have any questions, please ask. And then also you also need to have a worksheet that you need to fill out and complete after this video. So good luck and remember again, ask questions if you have any of them. Don't just sit there and, and do nothing. Thanks guys.